Hi, this is Eric from LongboxReview.com. Welcome to the show. This is The Gutters, my audio journal. Happy New Year. And oh my God, can you believe that it's still 2020? <laughs> At least it seems like it, right? Uh, I, I cannot believe the stuff that's been happening this, 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 the first few weeks of January. Uh, this is January 17th as I sit here and record this. And, uh, my God, I, I thought after, after the events of the election that things would, um, I don't know, be better. Uh, obviously, uh, I was wrong, um, considering what happened in the nation's capital, uh, earlier, uh, in the month. I, 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 I can't believe the, um, the, the level of idiocy, uh, that is going on in, in certain segments of the country. Uh, can, I, can you, can you believe this stuff? This, this crap? I, 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 I was reading uh, just the other day, uh, you know. So we had we had the problem of uh, s- some Republicans. What was it? There were like 147 Republicans who in Congress, who uh, in the Senate, who were helping to fuel the discredited conspiracy theories uh, or surrounding uh, supposed improper election results, which is have been founded to be untrue, untrue. Um, and trying to overturn a democratically elected president (laughs) and, and then fueling that, that into what became a mob invasion of Congress. And now, like I said, now I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, uh, people such as the, the, that real estate lady, (laughs) Uh, who was arrested by the FBI, um, now trying to walk back, or was it her or was it the, the, the other guy? I can't remember. There were, there were a couple of the reports that I was reading, uh, trying to walk back their involvement, you know, just, uh, got swept up in the moment or I was only doing what the president wanted me to do. And, you know, like that somehow absolves you from your own choices that's not how it works. And these are supposedly adults doing this. I, I just, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I am, I am of the mind that, uh, this is, unless we responsible people, um, in, 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 in power and, uh, those of us who put them there, and and hold them accountable um we need to stamp this out this attitude this bizarre mind think uh and i i know i realize that sounds fascistic i get it but if there are no consequences to these actions to this attitude then we're. This is going to get worse. Uh, every election is going to be contested. Every election is going to re- result in the in the death. And there were five people who ended up dying because of that mob invasion. The the those insurrectionists. Those in some cases terrorists. It's just going to get worse. And we have to we have to make it so that it costs too much for them to do things like that. I mean, obviously, we do this, and by we, I mean uh, those in those who have, uh, uh, or the, I, I, I should say, the police. The, the police um, react a certain way to a certain group of protesters, and not another group of protesters. And uh, that's just, sorry, fucking ridiculous. That, that we have this this situation. Um, I'm not saying that the police should have killed anybody, that no one should die in those situations. No one. But that they, I mean, yes, the, people are getting arrested, but I, 
where the fuck were the police when this was going on? <laughs> I, uh, I, I am, I am, I am disgusted by this. Um, I'm so angry at the people who did this, the, 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 the politicians who did it, the people who participated in, in that embarrassing display in Washington. All right. Um, I'll just, I'll just, I'll end this and hopefully I don't, I won't have to talk about politics in future episodes. Uh, but thank God the Republicans no longer control the Senate. Uh, we, we have the Senate by the slimmest of majorities. Uh, we have the house and we have the white house. So thank God for that. Um, that won't stay. I know, uh, come midterm, that's going to change. I know. Um, because this country is just screwed up, screwed up. All right. I'm done. I'm done with politics. Um, January 20th, which is only three days away at this point, (laughs) cannot come soon enough. And, uh, yeah, go, go the fuck away, Trump forever and always. Okay. Done. How was your holidays? (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, um, uh, compared to Thanksgiving, Christmas was much better for me, uh, this year. Um, not the least of which prior to Christmas was because, uh, my daughter, Brittany had her second child, a son, Hudson Isaac on December 7th. So, uh, my family, uh, has a new member and, uh, both mother and baby are doing fine. Um, the only problem with all of this, of course, is that because of the pandemic, my, my daughter's taking this very seriously as she should, uh, for her newborn. Um, I have, have not actually held him, held Hudson. Um, I actually, you know, I haven't hugged my daughter in months. Uh, so, you know, that that's, you know, the bad thing about this, but you know, I did go down. Um, I think it was two weeks after he was born. Uh, I did drive down to, uh, the Boise area where my daughter lives and had an outside porch visit. So they were inside, uh, me and, uh, Madison and Gabby were outside and we, we sat there with our our phones on speaker (laughs) talking to each other. Um, so I at least got to, you know, I was, I was, two feet away from, from both my daughter and, 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 uh, grand, other, uh, grandchildren. So I had a lovely visit. And then, um, my wife who had been staying with Brittany to help out, uh, with the baby and, uh, um, uh, also our, uh, Brittany's three-year-old, um, Hadley, uh, while, uh, you know, they were preparing for the birth uh, of the baby. And then after, so, so my wife had been away for a while. Like, and I talked about this, uh, in the last gutters episode, uh, which is the reason why I was home alone on Thanksgiving. And anyway, so, uh, that's the time when, when Kitra was coming back home, uh, so that she could spend Christmas with me and, uh, our other two granddaughters, Maddie and Gabby. Uh, but before we did that, so after that, that porch visit, we, we went to a drive through Christmas light show that was down in the Boise area. Uh, this is something that apparently is, I think, I think we read that it was started or at least was in Salt Lake City and, uh, other areas. It's, it seems to be expanding. And so you just kind of, they, they, you tune your radio to a certain station and they're, they're playing, uh, Christmas, uh, collection of Christmas music as you drive through this light display. And, you know, at first when I, when we were talking about, it, I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. And then when we got there, I was like, wait a minute, this is it. And I was like, oh man, I don't know if it, if, if 35 bucks was worth a carload of people to drive through this. But then once we actually started getting through it, driving through it, I was, I was, I was very pleased. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a great way to have, um, uh, most of my family come together at the same time and start celebrating Christmas. So anyway, then we, then we came back home. Um, uh, 
I think if I remember correctly, I had taken, yeah, yeah, that's it. I had taken that next week off. So the week leading up to Christmas, I had taken that off from work so that I could spend time with Kitra and Maddie and Gabby. Um, and, uh, we watched Christmas, uh, movies and specials. Um, we did some family activities as well. We, we made Christmas cookies one day. Uh, another day we painted, uh, I, I, I painted a Christmas tree. Uh, we, we also did string art. So, you know, that you uh, have a bunch of nails, you pound some nails into some wood and then take some string and, and, um, you make like me, I, I, it was the pattern of a star, uh, with yellow string. So it was, it was a star. Never done anything like that before. Uh, was entire was not entirely pleased with the result cause I wasn't, didn't quite grasp uh, uh, some of the nuances of string art and you'd be surprised that there are some, uh, Kitra actually had to, she decided to redo hers because she did it. She didn't, did, did not do it correctly, uh, for her, to her liking. So she, uh, unraveled it and then redid it. Um, and I thought there was something else. Uh, I, I think we played some games, probably the, probably the DC hero card game that we always like to play that. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, Christmas came and uh we we did our usual open the presents and uh ate food and um just kind of hung out i think maybe that was the day we played some games but again because of the pandemic and us not wanting to risk either being exposed to or possibly even exposing others to uh the virus we we stayed home and uh it's probably the first time in that I can even recall really where we stayed home the whole day. Usually what we do is we will get up and celebrate Christmas as a family. And then we will go visit other family members that are in the area. And we just, we didn't do that this year. Of course, we also normally go spend some time depending on the timeline, either Christmas or post Christmas uh, we go down to Boise to celebrate that with, with our daughter and her family and also try to, uh, arrange it so that my, uh, I spend my birthday down there with, with my daughter and that did not happen this year either. So anyway, uh, so, you know, just like, just like when we were kids, um, uh, at least I did, uh, I always, when it, whenever, whenever I had Christmas, after the family stuff was over, I would always call my friends or, 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 uh, well, yeah, I would have to call cause there was no other way of communicating to your friends other than in being in person, uh, back then. Um, I was trying to remember if I actually went to visit my friends on Christmas day. I don't think so. So anyway, I would call my friends and then we would talk about what'd you get? What'd you get? Um, especially when it came to when we got a little bit older and we, uh, were, uh, telling each other what kind of comic book related stuff that we got. And so in to to continue that tradition, uh my wife got me an in stock in stock trades gift certificate that uh on New Year's Day I spent. So she got me a lot of money, a lot on that gift certificate. And uh however, ordered them on New Year's Day, it is now 17 days later and they still haven't shipped. Uh there's one book that they do not apparently do not have in stock or having trouble finding it. I don't know which, but uh, I'm waiting on nine of those trades to be shipped and show up. Uh, another thing that my wife and family got me um, is the Secret History of AA Comics by R- Bob Rosakis. Uh, Bob the Answer Man Rosakis. Uh, so this is something that I think. I had seen excerpts from in back issue magazine and maybe also some images online. So I was aware of this, uh, but I, I guess I didn't realize it was a book until a few year, a few years ago. Anyway, so my wife got it for me and oh my God, what a, what a fun alternate world, uh, look at the history of comic books. So, uh, this is, this is uh, a blurb that's in the book in the 1940s, MC Gaines sold all sold blah. MC Gaines sold his all American comics line to his partners at DC comics. But what if instead, what if, uh, instead he had bought out DC 
and suppose Green Lantern and the Flash had become the surviving heroes of the Golden Age, with new versions of Superman and Batman launching the Silver Age of comics. Comic book industry veteran Bob Rosakis delivers a fascinating tale of what might have been, complete with art from the uh, from the Earth AA archives. Um, this has been so much fun reading this and seeing what might have been. You know, uh, Green Lantern was the premier uh, superhero. He was the Superman of this universe uh, uh, instead, and the Flash was the Batman. So yeah, very very interesting, and and seeing the 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 the, the new designs of Superman and Batman, uh, uh, re, uh, or launching the Silver Age of comics, it's just crazy crazy stuff. Um, and 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 uh, also the the Superman and Batman that we know di- do, uh, does exist in this in this world, um, in this history, but uh, because uh, Gaines bought out DC they just kind of faded away. They didn't, they didn't become the popular characters that they did that we know. So yeah, it's just, I I find it fascinating with all the multiversal stuff that's going on in DC comics right now. uh, Reading this book now is, is particularly uh, pertinent, I think to the time. So I, I, I've I've just been enjoying the hell out of that. Let's see here. Uh, Friend George from Meanwhile, the podcast sent me, uh, I th- think this is for my birthday. Um, yeah, uh, sent me a one of a kind wildfire sketch card that, uh, his co host Rodney Roberts, uh, aka Art Nerd with two R's in the word nerd, had done. So, um, you know, uh, as, as you may know, I am a big Legion of Superheroes fan. Uh, you know, I, I do the Legion project podcast with Peter Rios. Uh, so, uh, having, having this, this, uh, lovely sketch card, um, uh, featuring one of the characters from the Legion is, is great. So thanks to both George for, for thinking of me and sending that to me and Rodney for doing it. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, speaking of art, my daughter gave me for my birthday, a personalized, I think it's watercolor, uh, a picture of us. Uh, from this website called uh, Glacellis, G-L-A-C-E-L-I-S dot com. Uh, anyway, so it's it's a it's it's just a, a picture of the two of us from the back. So if you're looking at us uh, and our backs are to you, but it's uh, it's personalized in that it looks sort of like me because it because of the bald head and her hair is colored a certain way. And anyway, it was a very lovely thing that my daughter did for me. Uh, and it, the little, a nice little message about our relationship. And so any, anytime, basically anything my daughter gets me uh, for my birthday is just precious to me. So uh, that one in particular. So I need to get a, I still need to get a frame and stick that up on my wall somewhere. Um, and then also, let's see here. Um, I also got, uh, the Legion of Superheroes Blu-ray collection, that, that Legion cartoon series from several years ago. They just came out with a Blu-ray, se- uh, or the series on Blu-ray. So I have the entire thing on it, uh, entire thing now. I can, I can watch all of the episodes whenever I want. And I also got, uh, Batman Death in the Family that it's supposedly an interactive movie. Uh, I haven't watched it yet because I'm waiting for, some time when I can do so with, uh, with, uh, with the girls, Madison and Gabby. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And, uh, and then finally, oh no, there's one more thing, but, uh, also got, uh, the regrettable sidekicks by John Morris, which is, uh, another in the series of the regrettable, whatever books I have, I have one of those books. I think George got me that a couple years ago. I think. Um, anyway, it's looking at uh, uh, these obscure heroes, these obs- obscure characters from various ages of comics, from the golden age till now. And so um, given my uh, love for sidekick characters like Robin, the boy wonder and others, uh, I had I wanted to get that book. And so my, my wife uh, got that for me as well. And then I, I thought that was the last thing, but then I uh, Kitra gave me a late, a late arrived present. So I think about a week ago, she, she said, Hey, I have this, this present that came late. I ordered it for you, but it came late. Um, 
do you want to wait until next year or do you want it now? I'm like, <laughs> give it to me now. <laughs> and um, this has been so much fun. So the reason that she got it for me is that um, I told her about uh, these this these uh, songs. Yeah, songs. Eh, that's maybe being generous. They're, technically, they're songs. <laughs> that were being, I think they were featured on the Inglorious Trexperts podcast for their holiday shows, at least at first. Uh, and it was, it was William Shatner singing, and I'm doing this in air quotes, singing uh, Christmas songs. Yes, it's as awesome as it sounds. Anyway, so she got me this, the, the CD. Uh, we listened to it that day as we were, uh, going, going, uh, grocery shopping to and from the house. We were listening to it and I just had the biggest smile on my face. Oh, oh. And, and, and the album is called, uh, Shatner Claus, <laughs> the Christmas album. And it's, it's William Shatner doing his, his usual talk through lyrics thing that he's known for. Um, to the music of these songs, uh, arranged by various artists, and, and it's it's actually quite good. Um, uh, some of the performances, some of the arrangements are really good. Uh, and uh, uh, despite the fact that my wife thinks it sucks, I think it's one of the greatest things ever. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that that pretty much covers Christmas. Um, uh, the week leading up to New Year's, uh, we didn't have the girls. They were at their other house, their other home uh, for that week. And so it was just Kitra and I uh, on New Year's Eve. And um, I actually stayed up until midnight uh, for a change. I normally don't do that these last, I don't know, several years anyway. Uh, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't stay up that late anymore. Uh, mostly because I don't sleep well and uh, I get up early. I wake up early, so I need my rest. Um, and then it's just uh, me and Kitra on New Year's Day. We didn't. I don't. I don't remember what we did. Actually, probably just watch stuff, watch movies and stuff, which I will talk about. Some other things we watch too, but I will talk about those in just a minute. Um. Okay. And before I get to that, the entertainment portion, uh, that the pop culture stuff that I that I usually talk about in these gutters episodes. Uh, one last thing about my health. And I hope it's the last thing I ever have to, uh, not have to, but that I, that I, that I'm communicating. Uh, last episode, I, uh, talked a lot about the biopsy that I had to do twice, uh, on, uh, the, this lump that's on my thyroid. And, uh, between then and, and, uh, now I think it was late November. It was after Thanksgiving, I think. Anyway, I don't remember when, but it was, it was pretty sure it was in November. Uh, well, no, I, cause I did, I recorded that gutters episode at the end of November. So it must've been early December that I got the news from the doctor and the biopsy came back negative for cancer. So great news there. <laughs> uh, uh, I will, I will have to go back in two years to, uh, have him check it out again, just in case. But, uh, you know, I feel like. I feel like I dodged a bullet, uh, uh, this year. Um, actually I feel like I dodged two in a, in a sense with the election, but anyway, I, I wasn't going to talk about politics. I told you that. Sorry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, good news on the health front, at least for that particular thing. So, all right. So what, what kind of fun things did we watch, uh, listen to read actually read? Uh, so after Kitra got back, from visiting Brittany, uh, she had already watched this series, but she really wanted to watch it with me and I wanted to watch. So this is the latest season of the crown. I think it's season three. We ended up watching. So like I said, the week after Christmas, we did this and the girls weren't here. So I, you know, I get home, uh, from work and, uh, uh, after dinner, we'd sit down and we watch two episodes of the crown almost every night. I think, it, I think it was almost every night. Anyway, a uh, wonderful series, uh, as, as it has been, um, I will say this episode or the season, which is, which was more about Diana as, and uh, as, as the Royal family uh, worked through the eighties 
and um, uh, uh, dealing with Margaret Thatcher and everything that's going on at that time frame, um, the royals are kind of awful people based on the crown. I, you know, I, I don't want to say, uh, don't want to disparage folks that I don't know, but boy, if there's any truth to what we are shown in this series, um, eesh. um, I did adore though, the portrayals of Diana and Margaret Thatcher by the actresses, uh, Jillian Anderson, who, who, uh, played Thatcher deserves some sort of award for her portrayal. It was, it was brilliant, uh, wonderfully done. Uh, another show that we started watching, I think, because we were uh, running out of things to watch together. So, you know, my wife has her shows that she likes to watch that I don't care for. I have shows I like to watch that she doesn't care for. And so when we find something that we do like together and want to watch together, we 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 do that. We just kind of power through things. So we did The Crown. And then next was, um, although not, not in a short time period like The Crown, but... Um, the Mandalorian season one, we finally, I finally got to the Mandalorian. Um, and yes, I too fell in love with baby Yoda. I mean, excuse me, the child or some other name that I, I heard that he got in season two. Uh, so yeah, the child or Yoda, baby Yoda, adorable. Yes. The show generally though, it's fine. It's all right. Nothing spectacular there. Um, I actually got more excited about the the concept art that they show at the end of every episode uh, over the credits or during the credits uh, than I do the actual show. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 done fine. It's a it's it's a finely crafted piece of television entertainment. But you know, it, it's uh, this show is really what is it? It's, it's, it's a Western. First of all, the, the, that's the genre really, uh, or at least it's an homage to Westerns. Um, I've heard comparisons to lone wolf, woof, lone wolf and cub with this particular story. Um, and you know, just a lot of recognizable tropes. Uh, so, you know, nothing revolutionary. I mean, it is after all done by John Favreau, <laughs> send your hate mail to, um, but, but but I found it entertaining. Uh, we will be watching season two for sure. Uh, and then just recently, uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist returned. Thank God. Uh, we've only watched, only two episodes uh, have been released at this point. Uh, but man, it's, uh, that's one of those shows that I, I find comforting. Uh, especially now during this pandemic election crap that's been going on. Um, but I, but I just read yesterday that the show is going on hiatus in February until sometime in the spring, which, ah, I do not like that. Do not like NBC or is it ABC? I always forget. I think it's NBC. All right. Um, oh, I remember what we did at Christmas day. Uh, while we were just kind of hanging out, we did what I'm sure a lot of you did, which is watch Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max. So um, uh, given uh, that Wonder Woman 1984 was going to be released to HBO Max at the same time as out in theaters and we weren't going to theaters, I signed up for this, the, the, uh, the service. And uh, boy, let me tell you, they didn't waste any time in processing my fifteen dollar <laughs> uh, payment. Um, and there was no, you know, like most services, most uh, the, the streaming services will offer you like a trial period for free, like a week for free or something. Um, not them, boy. Yeah, you pay pay fifteen bucks and that's it. No, no free, no freebies. Um, uh, at least it didn't, that didn't work out for me. Uh, maybe it did for you. I don't know. But anyway, we watched, uh, well, first we watched the first Wonder Woman movie because my wife, um, wanted to, she hadn't, we hadn't watched it since we went to the theater to watch it several years, what, a few years ago. And she, you know, she wanted to watch it to get fresh in her mind what, what, uh, the characters were up to and the story and all that stuff before we watched 1984. And so we, yeah, we had a Wonder Woman double feature, uh, that day, which was that pretty much took up a good chunk of our day. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so what did I think of Wonder Woman 1984? Uh, it was much like The Mandalorian. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I wonder if this is one of those situations where the, we, I personally loved uh, most parts of the first Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman movie. In fact, watching it again as we did right before 1984, it just contrasted the, the, quality the difference in the quality of the the two movies the two stories and of you know obviously you can guess uh wonder woman the first one wonder woman movie is far superior to 1984 it was it was it was okay uh, it, it it read more to me like a comic book story realized on film that required a bit more editing to make it more cohesive, a little more tight. I get what Patty Jenkins and uh, the script writers were going for. And I actually do like the message of it. Um, but I don't know. Is maybe, maybe a little, I don't know. It's a little too sappy, <laughs> I guess. My wife didn't like it. Uh, you know, 30 minutes into it, she was like, this is it this is dumb. <laughs> so, uh, I was a little more forgiving of it as I usually am for, for these kinds of things. But, um, I don't know. I, I have to revisit the movie at some point in the future to see how it holds up. Uh, I certainly liked the villain fight a lot more in 1984 than in the uh, first movie for sure. Uh, but the, there's a lot of things wrong with that movie. They could have just, like I said, they could have edited it, edited it, edited it, you know what I'm saying, change things um, to make it a little better, I think. Speaking of changing things, uh, we uh, Kidder and I watched The Help um, one night. Uh, it's a movie that we've been wanting to watch. It has Emma Stone. I love Emma Stone so much. And so, I, you know, it was a movie I was wanting to watch anyway. Um, but I, I have to tell you, I have, I'm trying to think of if I, if I've ever had this kind of reaction while watching a movie, I was angry and at some points yelling at the screen because of the, 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 the way that the white characters treated the black characters in the movie. I just, I, it was it was a lovely movie, well done movie. The acting was great, the story was wonderful. I mean, it was a, it was a it was a well done movie. It's just I never, I can't think of a time when when I watched a a well done movie like that and had such a visceral visceral reaction to it based on what I what I was being shown. Uh I yeah. Um, I mean, go watch it and and see if you have a similar reaction. But oh my god, I I you know. Maybe it's everything going on this last year with Black Lives Matter and uh, other things that uh, that I've been watching. Um, it's just i i can't get I can't get over how human some human beings treat other human beings. It's 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 despicable and unthinkable, but yet it happened and happens and it shouldn't. And then and then to top it off, we um uh Madison has been reading uh for school to kill a mockingbird. And so I decided that I would read and it's this is one of my favorite books. Uh, uh it's such a beautifully written, beautifully realized story. Uh, and so I, I haven't read it in a long time, probably over a decade, if not more. Um, and so I decided to read the book along with Madison and that way I, we can talk about it and I can answer any questions, um, that she may have about the story or the characters. I wanted to discuss the themes of the book with her to help her prepare for anything that she's doing, uh, for school. But that was really just a lead up to be able to be able to watch the movie version and yet again we have the way that the white characters treat the black characters in this movie and it's just 
Yeah. A uh, beautiful film ad- adaptation of the book, uh, I have to say, especially considering that it was produced just really just a few short years after the book came out. And uh, yeah, just just a wonderful, wonderful film. Um, in fact, I, in many ways, the film improves upon the story. And that's something that Madison and I talked about. Um, she disagrees because <laughs> she read the book first. Uh, uh, and so she wanted the film to be a strict shot by shot reproduction of, of the book. And I'm like, I can't do that. That is, I mean, I could, but you know, it, you would end up with something like Wonder Woman 1984 where, they, where you need some editing to really compress some things and, and, um, tighten up some other, tighten up some other things. So anyway, so basically we watched some good movies <laughs> And then just uh, last minute uh, addition to this, uh, because last night my wife and I watched um, The Man Who Would Be King, uh, which is a 1975 movie starring Sean Connery and Michael Caine uh, based on a Rudyard Kipling story. Uh, Kipling in this film was portrayed by Christopher Plummer. So uh, I've been on a kick and I think I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I talked about this uh, last time, uh, last Scudder's episode, where I, I am I am wanting to watch a bunch of what are considered classic films, and this was on the list, uh, thanks to the 430 Movie Podcast. So thanks, guys, <laughs> for all this. But I we watched it. It was an interesting movie. Um, not what I expected. Uh, but man, one the the characters that Kane and uh, Conry portray in this are just great. They 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 did a great job uh, of realizing these characters, these these flawed, over the top, uh, enterprising men who take advantage of these people in Afghanistan. Uh, so yeah, it's. Very interesting film, um, not, and the ending was just something I never would have expected. Based on the tone of the film, pretty much all the way through until the, the last, I don't know, 45 minutes of it. So anyway, uh, you should check it out if you're interested, especially if you're a Connery fan or a Michael Caine fan, for that matter. Okay, uh, so here we are, home stretch, uh, some podcast stuff, you know. I do a podcast, so I like to talk about other podcasts. Uh, so I'll mention some things here that that I've been listening to that I that I uh, enjoyed uh, or lamented, for that matter. So uh, Sean from the Pulp to Pixel Network um, uh, and uh, is the co-host of the wonderful Never Ending Reading Pile show on that network. Um, uh, found out is now the co-host of the Bat Pod podcast, and so because of that, I started listening to the show and uh, I. I have enjoyed the conversations between Sean and his co-host um, regarding the Batman stuff. In fact, it, it allowed me to kind of get caught up on what's going on in the Batman books right now, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, go go uh, go look up the Pulp to Pixel Network and uh, look up the shows there, and then of course the Bat Pod, which is a it's not on that network, but you know Sean's involved, so I I, I enjoy listening to his thoughts on comic books. Uh, another group that, of course, that I uh, I love listening to their thoughts on comic books is Comic Geek Speak, and they had uh, uh, last year, last year, late last year, uh, I don't remember when exactly, but they had their 15th anniversary special, uh, which they were broadcasting live, I think, on Zoom. Uh, I, I think I downloaded Zoom on my phone so I could watch it. <laughs> um Anyway, but then they also released the audio version of that. And so it's almost three hours of, of the geeks getting together and some, some of the geeks who have not been on in, in quite a while, uh, as well. So that was really cool. Uh, also in the CGS feed is, uh, Murd, uh, released a new time bubble episode, which I always listen to those because Murd is just so, um, so knowledgeable and, and, uh, wonderfully expressive about the stuff that he reads. And so I listened to that. And then finally, just recently, I, I finished uh, it's, it's uh, their top five. I always love their top five stuff. The top five What If or Elseworlds 
uh, episode. And so you got to hear their top five and it makes me want to do my own top five, uh, on the same topic. And, um, I wonder if is, am I just cheating, uh, by doing, by doing something like that? It's just like, I, I want to be part of the conversation in my own way. And so, but I don't want to feel like I, I don't want people to think I'm just copying, um, CGS or other podcasts for their content, but uh, it's, I still want to do that anyway. Uh, another one, another show, uh, MJ from nerd goggles, uh, released a couple new episodes near the end of the year. And, uh, w- which is always a delight. I, I love listening to MJ's thoughts on the books that she's reading, even though these are books I would, I would never just pick up. So, uh, and, and also I, I like hearing about what she's up to, um, these days. So there was those, uh, also returning, uh, is the turbo cast, which is, a um podcast that is put out by i think i've talked about these guys before by uh turbo comics which is an, uh, an online comic store uh uh that the, the, they're based in boise um which is how i i kind of know them um i've actually met and talked to i think his name is mike uh i think i've talked about this before <laughs> now that i'm now that i'm talking about it again uh anyway so uh they've they've released i think it this is the ninth episode. Anyway, I, I quite enjoy their discussions about uh, their specific topics. And this time, uh, their mid-December episode, which we had, uh, we haven't haven't had a new episode from them for a few months at least. So it was nice to see that. But they were talking about the Marvel Annihilation event and what that all entailed and their experience with it. Um, so yeah, it's just it reminds me of of me and my friends when we would get together and and uh, read each other's comic books and then talk about them. So that they kind of have that same kind of vibe. Uh, just a couple more and I'm out of here and uh, you can be done with me. Um, uh, Rishikesh her way and oh, I've forgotten her name. Anyway, uh, uh, it's she's a cook. Oh my God, I've forgotten her name. They did, they were doing a podcast called Home Cooking Together and it was a four part series that ended up with 14 episodes <laughs> but it was it was a wonderful again uh, I, I talked about comforting um before it was a it was in regards to Zoe's extraordinary playlist um i found this this show very comforting the the repartee between the two of them the, their connection to each other their friendship uh talking about food and um sharing their experiences with food, you know, just during this time of where we're, we're shut, we're supposed to be shut in and we're all trying to learn how to cook new things because, you know, we're not, we're not going out as much maybe. Anyway, I, it was a delight to listen to the show, but unfortunately they, they announced that this episode 14 of the four part series would be the final one, but you know, we've heard that before. So maybe, maybe they'll be back. Uh, but it was, it was a wonderful series. If, if you haven't, uh, listen to it. Um, you can still go listen to it. It's, it's not timely. Uh, although there are some things that they, I think they mentioned that are time sensitive, but, but, uh, uh, you don't need to have listened to it earlier to, to gain enjoyment or even knowledge, uh, from it. So go, go do that. Um, I mentioned the inglorious Trexperts before and, uh, in relation to Shatner Claus, which, I say that, I say that phrase and it brings a smile to my face. Uh, they've, they've, for their end of the year special, what they decided to do this year, they released a series of episodes. I think there are four or five of them. Anyway, counting down the 101 greatest sci-fi episodes ever, according to them. And, uh, it's just been a, a wonderful, um, it's been wonderful listening to, them talk about uh, shows and episodes that I love, but also learning about things that I never knew existed, like the show UFO. And so now I really want to watch it. And then, you know, there are certain episodes of other shows that uh, now I, you know, I, I would love to go watch some Buck Rogers <laughs> again. Um, uh, what's the other? There was some other show that they were talking about. UFO was one. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of the other the other episode, or the other show. Um, but it made me. It makes me. Oh, uh, Space Above and Beyond. That's that's the one. I really want to watch that series again. Or not again. I've never watched it. I've only seen 
snippets of episodes over the years. But um, unfortunately, some of these these shows are really hard to find. They're not streaming anywhere. You the the, the if they they released a a DVD series, they're out of print and really expensive. You know. So anyway. Uh, I'm on the hunt to 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 watch some of these episodes uh, that they've they've highlighted in their show, and that brings me to another close to the gutters. Uh, thank you for uh, enduring my tirade <laughs> from earlier. And uh, how are you doing? How's how are things going with you? I hope well. I hope the new year. Uh, brings you joy and success and um, comfort, and I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope the this pandemic uh, we we get this defeated. The vaccine works. We can finally, but intelligently, start integrating or returning to our our previous lives, so that we can be with our loved ones. We can we can go see shows and. Go experience things as 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 a collective entity, um, like you know comic cons and other things. But boy, I, uh, my wife and I have been talking about this. Um, I don't. I even even if we are vaccinated, I don't know that that I would go to you know say Rose City Comic Con in the fall, um, if if they have it uh, this year. I would probably you know wait out any any cons or any like concerts or shows or movies, uh, for the foreseeable future, you know, maybe not until next year. Um, more importantly, of course, uh, when, when can we go visit and spend time with my daughter and her kids? Uh, that's the most important thing to me right now. So, you know, like I said, stay safe, be kind to one another. We'll get through this. And with that, I leave you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.